So, hi Adam, Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Master. Welcome to the Vivek Podcast, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey Vivek, thanks for having me on, man. I'm pumped. <laughs> you are pumped, man, and you make everyone pumped as well, man. So great work, man. Thanks. Okay, so before we get into everything, like let's let's start from the beginning. What you were doing before Bitcoin, that is pre two thousand thirteen, you entered quite early in two thousand thirteen. But what you were doing before two thousand thirteen, what Adam was doing before two thousand thirteen? Well, I was in Baltimore City. I was uh, into politics a little bit and into real estate. I okay. uh, I lived on a a block. I grew up in the Baltimore area, and I was part of a project that helped improve this. This one block in Baltimore City, uh, in a neighborhood called Reservoir Hill, it was called the Buy a Block Project. It was a lot of fun. It was an adventure. I encountered all so- from politicians to to drug addicts, to all sorts of people. Um, but I was obviously always interested in uh, technology. I had it all online, and I was always interested in in, in money and uh, financial assets. I was I had a, owned a house. And at the time of the financial crisis, 2008, 2009, I started going to alternative financial websites. I found out mm-hmm. about Doug Casey and going to these finan- alternative financial websites, some of them were kind of down. They were into doom and the world was going yeah. to end. But I did learn a lot and that's where I first heard about Bitcoin. And I didn't act upon it right away. I, I probably heard about it in 2010 or 2011. I, I don't know the exact time, but definitely by 2012. But finally, uh, at the end of 2013, November 2013, I bought my first two Bitcoin. And from there, just everything changed. And I actually yeah. I sold my house. I started traveling after that. I left Baltimore. Uh, so it, it, that, 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 that's my, my story. I, I always was open to technology and finance though. And uh, this, this was the perfect combination. Yeah, for sure. So we know that once, you know, we get into Bitcoin, it sucks us in Bitcoin's gravity sucks everyone in. So how Bitcoin changed your way of thinking from last eight years? Oh my, <laughs> it got me away from, uh, thinking, uh, government was, uh, it had any semblance of, I wouldn't say legitimacy, but uh, working in, in a proper way. Uh, that there's some legitimacy, but uh, it gave me insight into the intelligence level of most people in government, as opposed to the intelligence level of people in Bitcoin and the open-mindedness and the uniqueness of, of people in Bitcoin. It, it, it made me look at the regular mainstream world in a, a completely different way that most people were walking, living in their sleep and just did not want to think and just wanted to fit into the regular dollar world. And that, you know, Bitcoin was this easy escape that so few people were willing to take. And I I saw how risk averse most people were and just they could not break out of their usual financial paradigm. So it, it, it definitely financially woke me up, but socially woke me up and it just made me want to live life more. And I just traveled around so much since then. I didn't want to be a tree staying in the same place, staying in Baltimore. And it, it, it made me just gave me a new re- found respect for all sorts of people in all, all different countries just brought me outside of the, the United States way of thinking. It, it really, uh, and it made, me, it made me a healthier person willing to try new yeah. things and just, if I don't think I cared about fitting in very much beforehand, but at this point, you know, fitting in to anything that's so-called normal, I, I, don't, I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure, man. So what do you think you would be doing, like, if not Bitcoin, if you have not stumbled upon Bitcoin, what you would be doing now? Oh, that's like, that's a great question. If there... If there hadn't been big, I'd still be in, in Baltimore real estate, trying to make Baltimore a better place, yeah. kind of sacrificing myself. Uh, and th- I think I learned that too through this process. Just like, don't sacrifice yourself for some, uh, for, for people who, who don't, don't want help, you know, be, yeah. you know, just uh, be in motion, 
just to, to stick around and try to help. But, you know, personal responsibility is the new counterculture, as I say. That, that, that's something I learned, you know. Take yeah. care of yourself. Let other people take care of themselves. You know, don't, 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 don't kill yourself for the so-called greater good. There really, yeah. there really is no greater good. Your, your greater good should be yourself fi fixing your own life. So I, I think I might be stuck in that old world where I, I you, know, with, you know, trying to help other people who, who refuse to help themselves. Yeah. Yeah, that's sad, man. Yeah, so yeah, Bitcoin changes everyone's lives, man. So that's great that you got you got stumbled into Bitcoin. So okay, so I I wanted to ask you like you always say that you never sold Bitcoin for fiat, but do you have some funny or crazy stories of you spending tens of Bitcoins in something, some stuff which is now worth hundreds of thousands or millions? Yeah, you know what? I actually I <laughs> I have had to spend it, but when when I the one time I'm thinking of. And it was a it was a good good purchase. The the <laughs> first e the first ever uh, South Af well African Bitcoin conference was in Cape Town, South Africa, in okay. 2015, in April of 2015, and they they had everything listed on the site in South African rand. And I'm like, dudes, can I just send you Bitcoin? And they didn't even they didn't even have it set up for Bitcoin at the time. It, uh, th this is how early on we were. Uh, mm -hmm. It was the first Bitcoin conference in, in Africa. And by the way, and this was the first Bitcoin conference I ever attended. I, I decided I'm going to do it big. If I'm going to go to a Bitcoin conference, I want it to be somewhere wacky. So i never yeah. been to Africa before. So I decided, but, but, so I decided to go, but I didn't have Rand to send them. And I didn't, there, there seemed to be, so I convinced them. And I think she was going to do it anyway, to accept Bitcoin. So I yeah. sent her like, whatever it cost, a hundred dollars in Bitcoin. But then I purchased a hundred dollars of Bitcoin immediately afterwards uh, okay. to, to, to take the place of the Bitcoin that I just sent her. So I don't consider that really a law, but oh my God, Bitcoin was only worth, <laughs> at, the, at the time of that conference, it was uh, in the two, was in the 200s or something like that. It was, oh well. it, it, yeah, yeah, it was, it was in the high 200s then. So if I, if I sent, if I sent her like a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin, I mean, I almost sent her a half a Bitcoin. Uh, yeah. back back then so mm -hmm. uh but i did re i replenished it immediately i replenished it immediately <laughs> uh and, there, and so that that's that's i guess that's my uh my my wackiest uh my wackiest story not not too wacky but yeah. um it, it shows you how early things were then and uh and i really enjoyed going to that conference though it, it was it was well worth it i met all sorts of people and it really opened my eyes i that was where i first encountered vinnie lingham actually um okay. who, who's from south africa originally but lives in uh california now a, a, a big entrepreneur and it was there where he you know people back then you gotta understand they were worried that bitcoin could go to zero and he made a good speech and he said you know what it's he asked everybody how low they thought it could go and some people were like it might go down to 50 dollars again and he's just yeah. like dudes i know people in silicon valley if it goes below a hundred dollars they will just back their freaking trucks up and just buy it up and i thought about it i'm like it's impossible for it to go to zero it's just it's impossible for it and that kind of gives you a confidence when you like realize it's not going to zero um i mean so those were dark days in terms of the price i mean it had, it had been as high as 1100 in 2013 and now it's two years later and it's in the 200 so there were people that were scared it was going to go into double digits again but but it did, it did not yeah. do that and he, he brought up a really great point and, and gave me some uh gave, made my hand stronger my my young hand back then i did not <laughs> you know that i was just i was just strengthening my hand in those early days but that that really yeah. made my hand stronger going to that conference and meeting him now yeah, I, I really want to ask you this question. How your strong, like, hands are that much strong, man? Like, you never sold it. How you got that much, you know, conviction from early on? Well, I've always, throughout my life, I've been a long-term thinker. And, you know, bu buying that the house in the bad neighborhood, I knew that eventually, uh, through time, uh, that, that the house would be worth more because the neighborhood would become better uh, through, my, through my hard work. So I can... And I, I am living in that neighborhood uh, and, and living in Baltimore City, working for myself. I was always able to budget very well and, and save money and not waste money. And I had savings. And 
yeah. back in the old days of, of my grandparents, you know, everybody had a savings account. And everybody put money in their savings account every month. So yeah. I had the mentality all along of, you know, always putting a little bit of money away. So Bitcoin became right away my savings account. So you never, you never touch your savings account. So for me, unless there's like some, you know, you don't touch your savings account until you're older, till 10 years along the line, I always thought. I, I didn't know when you touched your savings account. So for me, Bitcoin became my savings account, like totally untouchable. So it was really easy not to panic sell. Like I, I, never, I never had a desire. And, you know, logically, speak, thinking logically, if I, if I bought my first few around 600, 700, 500, why the heck would I like panic sell at 200 and something? Like when yeah. I didn't, I mean, I, I wasn't starving. I, 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 yeah, so it, there, was, it, there was never a question in my mind of, of, of selling. I knew, I, I knew it, it would get higher again. It was just a matter of time. I just had to, I had to be patient. And, but there, there was no temptation because it was, and that's what I recommend to everyone. Just consider it your savings account, something that is totally untouchable. And I didn't even understand the whole four-year cycle at first. Like, okay. eventually I was like, well, there's this halving coming up. So, I, I, you know, that, that'll change things. That'll, that'll, that'll help the price. And, and sure enough, it did. So, uh, yeah, I, there, there was never a temptation. Yeah, so you had low time preference before it was cool in Bitcoin world, right? I, I had strong, I had strong hands before it was cool. Yeah. I mean, I was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Man. So how, how you think Bitcoin plays out from here? Like public companies are already started buying Bitcoin as reserve. What next? Like what do you think will happen from here? Do you think central banks will go and yes. buy started buying Bitcoin? What do you think? Like how will it play out? Yes. Well, I, I, I do think the, I don't think it's super early. You know, I used to always say it's still super early. Once Michael Saylor and, uh, once Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy bought uh, all that Bitcoin uh, during the summer, I knew that was a change, that um, we were in a new stage here and that more companies would follow. So I foresee even more companies following. Uh, but the, ne the next stage after that is definitely a, a country will announce it. It, it bought it for its uh, central bank. So we've expected that to happen for quite some time. You know, I mentioned Vinnie Lingham. He's been talking about that yeah. since 20, he's been talking about that since 2016. Uh, so it's only a matter of time before that happens. But that, that, that'll be another stage in Bitcoin's evolution. It, it won't be early anymore at that point. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you can still, you know, if, if people are watching this or listening to this in the future, we're at a time where regular people can still beat central banks to buying Bitcoin. In the future, people are going to complain. They're like, oh, why do these companies beat me to it? Why? It was unfair. It was unfair that the Central Bank of Japan beat me to it. Well, no, we're yeah. here in the present. You can still beat them. You can still, but most people are not proactive. That, that is something that I've learned. They, most people, they FOMO instead of, instead of when uh, things are bad, buying. Yeah. People have to wait until the crowd goes crazy. And that, that's a mistake. You buy low, like a year ago, when on, on March the 12th, when there was blood in the streets and everybody was panicking because of the virus, everyone started, people started selling Bitcoin. It dropped below $4,000 for a second. I bought two Bitcoin that day. Yeah. So m m most people, they, they do what the crowd does and they end up regretting because they can't make their own decisions. But now's, now's a great time as any, if you look at it in the bigger picture. And again, what do I expect for Bitcoin? It's, it's more than a company, so it has to be worth more than the most valuable company on earth. The most valuable company on earth is Apple, and that's a, a $2.1 trillion market cap. So Bitcoin will one day have to have a market cap over $2.1 trillion. Right now, it's a trillion dollars. So, so make your decisions with, with that in mind. Yeah. So what is your personal Bitcoin thesis? Like, do you see fiat currencies collapsing and Bitcoin taking over or you see both Bitcoin and fiat currencies or state currencies going no, on I, I, I don't think the dollar is going anywhere. You know, there's a lot of people in this space that think Bitcoin is going to get rid, destroy all fiat currency. And that's the way Bitcoin wins. And I don't believe that at all. I think there'll always be fiat currency. I see how stupid people are they will gladly accept an inflated dollar. I mean, yeah. even the dollar had gained value today, I, I heard, you know, could, could be compared to uh, some other currencies. And, and that's why some people are saying Bitcoin went down recently because 
Uh, some people had some newfound confidence in the dollar. I think it's ridiculous to have any confidence in the dollar whatsoever. But I can't decide what 80% of the people think. Most people don't think at all. They will, yeah. when, there's a, when there's a bad situation, they still naturally flock to the dollar, even though they know it's being printed up like in, it's insanely being printed up. And the media and the government will just say it's happy inflation instead of inflation. They, they'll make it seem like it's a good thing, all this money printing. And the digital dollar we're going to get, we're going to, all the countries are going to have central bank digital currencies, and they'll show how convenient it is. But the smart people will opt in the Bitcoin. So I think Bitcoin is just a great thing for the people who are willing to, the, the smart people of the world. Most people are not smart. Most people will be stuck in fiat. Most people will be slaves for the rest of their lives, and they'll be happy in a comfortable dystopia. So, and I, I and I have been around this world, and yeah. the United States is, you know, a lot of people might hate the United States, but culturally, so many other people, they would give their right arm to get into the United States or just to have the United States' culture. So the dollar supremacy in terms of fiat isn't going anywhere. Bitcoin is obviously better, but most people don't, they don't necessarily want what's better. They want what's easy, what's comfortable, and we're going to have a digital dollar eventually that'll be very easy and comfortable for people. So no, uh, my, my Bitcoin thesis does not involve the dollar yeah. being destroyed at all. I think it will be, it's, it's here for a very, very long time. Yeah, that is very realistic. But how you think like Bitcoin will, what is the end game with Bitcoin? Do you like see Bitcoin just like gold? Like? It will stay how the gold stays right now. Or how do you see Bitcoin? Like in a set, that that'll be one aspect of it. Okay, it will take uh, the place of gold. It, it's so much yeah. easier. You can see with all these NFTs out there, which are ridiculous, um, <laughs> that the the youth of today very much respect digital. Okay, they don't need physical gold anymore. So with that NFT mentality, I think that's to an extreme. But you, you can see how the youth of today, they're going to have no, they're not going to have very little interest in physical assets like gold. So because there are a lot of older people that are like, Bitcoin just lives in the ether. I need to feel it. Well, no, young people don't need to feel anything. They, they're, they're totally down with digital. So that's one aspect of gold, you know, pre preserving your wealth. But, and, and so unconfiscatable. There are so many things in this world that are confiscatable today. So it's the one thing that's unconfiscatable. It's the one thing that is uncensorable, okay? You know, there, there are many people, you, you can't send them PayPal anymore, okay? They get cut off from PayPal. That's, uh, that's, that's not possible, you know? You, you might not like what someone stands for, but uh, other people might, and you can't stop them from getting Bitcoin. Your worst enemy can get Bitcoin, and that's, uh, that's a valuable aspect of Bitcoin. Uh, the other thing is we're clearly living in an inflatable world right now where there are like no rules. People continue to change the rules of the game. They print up more and more dollars. There's so much uncertainty in – there's so little scarcity out there. And with Bitcoin, the rules of the game never change. And there's few things in life where you can say that anymore. I mean, yeah. financial assets, you really can't say that. You don't know how much a, a company is going to print up in stocks. You don't know how, how much a country is going to print up in fiat. With Bitcoin, you know it is uninflatable. And that is very valuable right now. That is, that is very valuable. So uh, that's where it's going to gain uh, value in the future. And we have all these countries that with capital controls, and you can't get yeah. your fiat out. It's so easy to get your Bitcoin out of these well, once you get into Bitcoin, it's easy to get out of any uh, country, get your, your wealth out of any country. So that, that's, that's what I see that the future of Bitcoin. There's a lot, lot of uh, unconfiscatable, un, un, uh, uncensorable, and uninflatable. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you see Bitcoin market going in the direction instead of, you know, Bitcoin replacing all the governments and everything, right? Well, yeah, re replacing all the Goldmans, you said? governments oh. like states and everything i don't i don't think it'll replace governments no uh i i, I think it'll just uh again it'll be it, it'll be an i don't think it's i think it'll replace gold <laughs> yeah. Re replace aspects of gold 
but I, there's all these people that want Bitcoin to destroy so much, so much of, of, of modern life. <laughs> and yeah. it, it won't destroy, it, it'll just be a way for people to opt into something better than the decrepit way of mainstream society. I don't see, I, I have no problem with countries existing uh, as they currently exist or fiat existing as it currently exists or the banking system exist, um, existing as it currently exists. As long as people who don't like that can, can get into something better and, and Bitcoin provides that. Now with the banking system, by the way, I think they will all, uh, the people who are like, well, the bank, the banks are all going to go away. No, they're not. For, for Again, th there'll be places, th they will be able to store your Bitcoin. A lot of them, they're already talking about storing cryptocurrency for people. So there's going to be a lot of options. Banks are smart. Banks are, they have a lot of people working for them. They're, they don't want to go out of business. They will adapt to whatever changes need to be made. Um, and they are, you know, we, we talk about Bitcoin people being independent thinkers and wanting to self-custody. And the second part is kind of nonsense. But most Bitcoin people, they don't know how to control their own private key. They would rather just let a third party take care of them, uh, which is sad. But uh, and that that'll be a great uh, a great way to, for banks to make money off of uh, Bitcoin people. Just hey, we'll, we'll safely store your Bitcoin for you. We'll be your Bitcoin bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is quite true and realistic to be honest. Instead of you know saying Bitcoin will do that, Bitcoin will do that. Yeah. Okay, so you, you have been creating content from very long time. So what do you think of this new age Bitcoin podcasters, to, which are many now? So do you think... Oh, oh, oh wow. You know, I, I have seen it develop over time. Uh, you know, at, at the beginning, there were very, very, very few of us. And yeah. immediately, you could st some people just started uh, talking about altcoins. And everybody wanted the next Bitcoin. And that, that's, I think that's the mentality of most people in life. They all, they think they've missed out. So they want a better version. They always think there's going to be a second. And well, first of all, Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. But a lot, since there's that wish out there and so many people are short-term thinkers, you know, they, they, these alternative podcasts talking about uh, BitConnect and all of these horrible altcoins back in 2017, they, they, I mean, they came about early on because right away people, people couldn't be patient and wait for Bitcoin to be, become what it is today. So there's all these impulsive people got on the YouTube and what YouTube is not about uh, good content. YouTube is about following a mindless algorithm. So there are plenty of people that could figure out the mindless algorithm on YouTube. And that's to do fancy sets and graphics, talk about whatever is the hottest altcoin or the hottest uh, ICO, the hottest NFT, would, you know, they don't, they, they're constantly changing what they're talking about, but that, that works, that works with the YouTube algorithm. So I have seen YouTube, uh, cryptocurrency people degenerate horribly over time. Yeah. It's, it's really bad out there. I mean, most of the people don't know what they're talking about. They'll just talk about whatever is popular. So NFTs are popular. That's what they're talking. For me, I have stuck with Bitcoin the whole time. Now, let me tell you something. If you want to be a successful YouTuber, don't do what I did. <laughs> don't, st don't stand for anything. If you want to be a successful YouTuber, don't stand for anything. Go wherever the wind blows you. But I'm not a YouTuber. I'm a freaking Bitcoiner. Pound that freaking like button, okay? So I stand for something. But most of these guys stand for nothing. Now, the podcasters, the a lot of those guys do stand for something, okay? Because they're not following a, a, a YouTube algorithm. But I, I think most of them... Uh, Hey, most of them just want to, uh, they'll, they'll talk about what's ever popular also. There are plenty of guys talking about altcoins, ICOs and stuff. But there, there, there are some guys who generally really, really are hardcore Bitcoin guys in, in the podcast land. And, and there's some in YouTube. And all the guys I have on my show, on the This Week in Bitcoin Friday show, uh, yeah. they're, they're hardcore guys. I, I don't let, uh, I mean, I, I occasionally have guys that, have various interest in altcoins or whatever, but I, 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 I do guys that don't, you know, blow around with the wind and act, they stand for something. I, I, I hang out with the crew that stands for something. Yeah. Yeah. And you have been doing this from last eight years straight. Like you haven't changed your tone or something like you haven't gone away with ICOs and everything. No, no, no. You, you can check, Bitcoin. you can check the archives at disruptmeister.com. You can watch all 2000 of my freaking shows. I erase <laughs> nothing. 
I keep it all out there. So you can see when I've said things that are, might be a little bit wrong about Bitcoin, um, but I've said, I mean, I made shares about buy 10 Bitcoin for $5,000, you know, when they were 500 each. Uh, and you'll, you'll be set, you'll be elite. So no, I, I, have, I have stuck with the same thing. But most people, most people don't want to hear this. Most people do not want to hear, they think it's boring. Oh, you only buy Bitcoin? You don't trade? You don't buy altcoins? I mean, I get this all the time. Like, you do nothing with your Bitcoin. I'm like, yes, I do nothing with my Bitcoin. That's, yes. that. so I never sold a Bitcoin. And that's treated me very, very well. There are plenty of people that have come back to me and they're like, you know what? I do wish that I had I'd hung on to all my Bitcoin instead of buying that altcoin or instead of buying that ICO. So some people do, are smart and they learn a lesson. Most people never learn a lesson. There are plenty of people that had uh, shows back in 2017. They're gone. They're never returning. They're into something else now. They're into uh, uh, GameStop or, or something like that. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of, I, I've seen so many people come and go in this space. So I've seen a lot of flavors of the month in, in terms of people and in terms of altcoin. But some of us have a really strong yeah. hand and we have conviction and we never leave, baby. So I haven't changed yeah. at all. Yeah, for sure. You have been consistent. Like you are one of the one of the few people who have been consistent throughout all these years. So it's been a lot of years you have been talking about Bitcoin every single day. So don't you feel bored someday? Like, do you feel sometime that you should just hold Bitcoin and walk away from convincing people every single day? Like, yeah. what is your motivation to keep going? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I do feel like it. I, I do feel like I'm. Th there's going to be a time when I uh, when I stop. Um, and you know, I my motive. I I, I enjoy it. I, I I enjoy. I especially enjoy the this week in Bitcoin shows when I can talk to to other guests. And I really love being in, on other people's show. I, I love this. I love being asked questions. So keeping myself out there, it get you know it it gets me on other people's shows. It networks me with other people. And I, I get introduced to all sorts of Bitcoin ideas and I connect people. I'm doing TikToks for CoinBeast. I found out about these. They, they, they're a pure Bitcoin uh, social media source. You know, they, they, they write about Bitcoin on a website and obviously have a TikTok. I do their TikToks. But I, I, like, it. I like encountering new people and it, it allows me to meet people when I travel around the world. So I, I, I enjoy the network aspect of it. I, I enjoy the camaraderie of it. But there, there are times that it's like, oh, man, I don't, I don't feel like doing it. Yeah. Um, but I, I always bring the positive energy. Uh, yeah. and, but I do, I do think that there will be a point where, you know, the, the, you know it might become risky. You know, I, I'll have to play by ear. Like if, if prominent Bitcoin people, like, get jacked or something, like, I'll, I'll definitely uh, – keep a real low profile at, at that point. But I, I enjoy, again, I, I enjoy talking with people about it. It, it, it gives me a, a, a buzz. And I just, I love being in this golden age and being in this, at the tip of the sphere in, in, spear in terms of a, a growth industry. I'm really, it, it, it excites me. So uh, that, that's, uh, that's, that's my uh, public contribution is the shows. Uh, but you know, the, behind the scenes, I do a lot of stuff too, just just talking with people and and helping them connect to each other. So I, I, I'll I'll always continue to do that with my my Bitcoin buddies. That is great to hear, man. Like we we love your what you do. Like you bring positive energy to everyone, not like just the guests, but everyone. So yeah, the great work you're doing, man. Okay, so Bitcoin is already a savings account for you and many Bitcoiners. So do you plan to spend your Bitcoin in some human extension kind of technologies or something in future when money becomes like Bitcoin becomes the de facto currency and money? Well, I, I, I will, you know, I'm, I definitely am not go, I, I'm going to spend my Bitcoin eventually. Yes. And I made a rule that I just, I'm, I'm comfortable enough that I won't need to, I don't think I'll need to spend any until after 2024, but what will I spend it on? Uh, yeah. And I, I just, on, on whatever's cutting edge. Uh, well, I mean, I'll get myself some nice things. Uh, I, I, you know, I'll probably get a car. I got nieces and nephews, maybe get them cars, but uh, <laughs> you know, make sure my mother's, my mother will be completely taken care of. I'll be completely taken care of. Uh, but I, I'm interested in life extension technology. I, I'll tell you that. 
And so we don't okay. know how that's going to develop or how, how costly that's going to be. Uh, but I, I, I try to keep this exponential mentality uh, that, you know, who knows what the future is, how quickly it's going to grow, this abundance mentality, where I say to people, aim high. I want to live 200 years, so I want to be able to pay for that. So some of what I'm going to spend my Bitcoin on in the future hasn't even been created yet. I mean, I, can, I probably cannot, uh, most of us cannot even grasp what, uh, I mean, back in the year, uh, in the 90s, you wouldn't have been able to understand what uh, Facebook was, if you describe, or, or what Twitter was back then, if someone yes. from the future came to describe it. So what I plan to spend my Bitcoin on cannot even be described now. How about that? But, but there, there are some things, obviously, uh, you know, like, like the cars and, uh, you know, more, more traveling and traveling with my family, paying for things for my family and, and just making sure my family's, you know, to totally cool and, and everything. Okay. Okay, that's fair. So what you are saying is you don't know the, the thing you are going to spend your Bitcoin on may not be invented yet. Yeah, I might, might not, but I, I'm really interested in life technology, life extension technology, and just all sorts of technology, just health technologies, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to invest in any companies or anything like that, and I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm always going to have a stash of Bitcoin. I'm not, mm -hmm. like, till the day I freaking die, I'm going to have some, some Bitcoin on me, so th th there's some Bitcoin that I have now that, that I will never get rid of that'll just go to my, if I ever have kids, they'll get it or my nieces and nephews will get it, whatever. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping that, that savings mentality too. It is always going to be my savings account. I'm always going to ha have some, but yeah, some, some will have to be spent, uh, you know, after the 2024 halving and maybe not, maybe I'll be able to hold it off even longer then. Who, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So do you believe in this hypothesis of citadels? Like in Bitcoin world, we will probably have tens of thousands of countries or citadels to choose from, or you don't buy into that argument? Buy into, what did you say? I didn't hear what you exactly said there. Okay, buy so I asked like, do you believe in the hypothesis of citadels? The hypothesis of what? Citadels. How do you spell that? <laughs> Can I... Okay, okay, let's ignore this question. Okay, I will jump into the next question. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. So you get interviewed a lot. So what question you think that people should ask more often, which they don't ask you? Uh, oh, wow. That, that's a, with the, with the interviews, with the interviewers that ask me, uh, yes. I, know they don't what, generally. I know what they should ask. I know what I get asked a lot that I should, I wish they wouldn't ask me that they, they always <laughs> ask me about the latest flavor of the month altcoin or, 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 or ICO. But uh, I, I wish people would uh, just ask me about the, uh, the, the, the savings aspect of it more. And uh, wow, I, that's, that's a really good question. Uh, what, would I, uh, what, would I, what would I ask? Uh, just, uh, uh, I don't know, to, to, to just, just <laughs> questions about, about savings. And uh, just how to, okay. But uh, maybe how to how how to be less, you know. Ask me about uh, the the glory, the fun of not being impulsive. The okay. How to how to increase your conviction, or the the feeling you get when you you know that you've stuck with something for so long. That, that, that it's paid off just to, to, to describe that feeling uh, of, because eventually uh, the long term does pass by and you see the fruits of your labor or the fruits of your frugality. And uh, it's, it's a really good feeling. It's, it's a really good feeling to know that I've been saying the same thing since 2013 and now I, I'm living, I'm living it. And uh, just the, you know, to, to, to ask about that, that, that aspect of, okay. of, of my life, I guess. Okay. So more about the conviction side, right? Yeah. More, more about the conviction. I, I can't, I can't think of a specific, uh, okay. a, a, a specific question, uh, that, that I, I'd like to, I'd like to get asked though now. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Okay. Adam. So last two questions before I let you go. So the, so the first one is a little bit futuristic, but you are a futuristic guy, so I will ask you anyways. So 
how you think the world will look like thousand years from now? I know it is far, but still, how you think through it? Well, I I think people will definitely uh, be living over two hundred years. Uh, I I do I think we will have uh, colonies all over the solar system. We'll definitely have sent interstellar probes out of the solar system. Uh, we probably will have sent. Um, uh, so some uh, we we probably discovered plant we, we will have discovered planets that are inhabitable outside of the solar system but we won't be able to get there yet but we'll probably be able to send um self-replicating machines that can uh create artificial wombs that can birth people on other other planets uh i i think people will be all there'll be all sorts of genetic modifications here on earth I, I think there'll be colonies all over all over the solar system of people who don't want to fit in, okay? Who have just yeah. left Earth behind that just are, uh, you know, there are going to be a lot of totalitarian governments that pop up. And I think that's going to be a way to drive people off the planet. You can even see like Elon Musk, part of the reason he I think he wants to be off of Earth because he just doesn't want to deal with all these crazy rules anymore. So I think on, on, on Mars and, and on some of these moons all around the solar system, we're going to have like the ultimate like libertarians like creating their own anarcho-capitalist societies. But uh, unfortunately, I think we'll also have people that, that go the opposite way. We'll have dictatorships uh, on Earth and, and, and off Earth too, but there'll be a lot of options. I think there'll be a lot of options, but uh, there'll, there'll just be a total abundance in terms of food and they might not even have to slaughter animals anymore. Like they just make artificial, they'll be able to produce animal meat without killing animals. I mean, I think we're really close to that. So it, it'll be, it'll be quite comfortable. I am, I have a very positive outlook for, and I mean, people might, what, what is defined as work. I mean, there won't be physical labor for humans anymore. We'll, robots will yeah. do all our physical labor. Okay. So, where Bitcoin fits in there in that world? That is a that is a great question. Um, well, by then we'll probably have quantum computing, so Bitcoin will have been updated to resist uh, quantum computing. And I I think we will we will still uh, we, we will definitely still have it, but. The, the, the thing with Bitcoin that people, and I've, I've known this early on, people have been writing about Bitcoin in space for quite some time. It, it yes. doesn't work. Like, like Mars will have its own Bitcoin. There's some yes. issues with time and, and uh, the way it, it would take for, uh, how long are the, the, it would take for the message to get to Mars and everything and, and, and further out to like, uh, the, the, you know, to Triton, which is a, you know, a moon of Neptune. So I think, I think currencies, well, we'll, I, we'll have a whole new way of thinking about finance and, and, uh, and money. But, and, and it was, again, so we, maybe we, do, you don't, we won't have we, money. We, well, I think we will have money, but obviously we won't be compensated for physical. I mean, maybe the robots would just pay each other digitally, like, because we, we're not going to be doing the physical labor anymore, but I, I think it will be, um, Obviously, everything there'll, there'll be no more physical money at all. But I mean, uh, and, and so Bitcoin probably will still be on Earth. It, it, but in, uh, there'll be other other uh, cryptocurrencies, and maybe something even better uh, than cryptocurrency will probably come up in, in a thousand years. Yeah. So, but I think there'll still be uh, there'll still be Bitcoin on Earth. How about that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that is fair. And do you think like robots might take over humans or do you, you don't buy into that? that no, I, 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 I actually don't, I don't buy into that. I don't, okay. I don't believe, I don't fear AI. I think we're, we'll have a handle on it. And the best way to, to avoid that situation and, and for all the people that think there's going to be environmental, that we're going to destroy the earth. Okay, think that. Just let us, let us get off this planet. I think once once we have a, a major space station, all, all people living, uh, you know, in a in a space station off the planet, 
or on another on the moon or on Mars, we're in really good shape. Uh, just that that's doubling the odds, tripling, quadrupling the odds of the survival of humanity. I'm not worried about the survival of humanity because I think we'll be off this rock real soon, real soon. Okay. And uh, so we, I, I'm not fearing. Maybe maybe someone will go crazy with AI on on Earth. I, I don't really foresee that happening, but um, I I don't fear I don't fear the robots. They are our servants, and they will serve us well, and they they will not uh, take us over. We, we've we've got free will, and you you we won't be able to create free will in, in robots. I don't think. Yeah, uh, but who knows? Okay. Yeah, let's hope for the best, man. Okay, last question before we wrap it up. Do you think we humans are alone in this universe, or do you believe in this uh, life outside Earth as well? Do you think that life outside Earth as well? Well, it's um, the universe is so gigantic. Yeah. I mean, so many galaxies. The odds are that yes, there is. Now, I, I don't think uh, life has ever visited uh, this planet in, in the in the modern era, at least. Um, so. Uh, or, or in the time that humans have been around, I don't think light, there's been any extraterrestrial life visiting this planet. How about that? Um, yeah. But I, I believe uh, there is uh, there, the universe is so gigantic. Yeah, there, there's life somewhere else. So uh, I, 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 it might be really simple in form. I don't I don't know how intelligent there like, how much intelligent life might be out there, if any. But there's got to be at least simple life out there. Or like animalistic life level, you know, something as smart as a lion somewhere. So I, I really do encourage uh, everyone to keep, keep on looking out there and yeah. you know, creating telescopes that can identify uh, certain uh, markers for life out there. But I, I, so I do. There's there's life out there. there. There's something. There's some other type of life. I don't know how intelligent it is though. But it, it's very possible that. Uh, there is even there's life even more intelligent than us out there. That is possible. I'm not ruling that out. But we're not visited by aliens. I yeah. do not believe there are, there are aliens flying around Earth or even flying around our solar system whatsoever. I think we're going to develop technologies that will make it easier very soon to conclude if life is out there. Though I think uh, definitely in the next 20 years we're going to be able to uh, we'll probably discover proof of some type of life out there. Yeah, and maybe there is a life which is more intelligent than us and they must be watching us and what we are doing and what we're not. So we never know, man. You, you, you never know who might be watching us from, from a really far, far, far away though. So there's nothing yeah. they can do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, man, any last thoughts before before you let, uh, before I let you go? I just have a, have a strong hand, everyone. Don't don't worry about uh, don't worry about the the dips, um, and I guess that, that that's a question I would like people to ask me more. Like, uh, how do you uh, how do you get by when the Bitcoin price is so turbulent? What what do you yeah. do? How, how how don't you panic? And you just you ignore it. You, you ignore yeah. you you make it. You get it in your head. This is what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is turbulent. You repeat to yourself over and over again. There are going to be days where it drops by uh, ten thousand dollars one day. So if it drops by a thousand dollars one day. That's nothing. That's nothing compared to the future. But in the long run, Bitcoin always returns to its all-time high in terms of fiat. Remember that, people. On those down days, Bitcoin will always remember re will return to its all-time high. One day closer to an all-time high. And thank you so much, Adam Meister, for coming on. And yeah, can you please let people know where they can find you? Oh, yeah. So follow me on Twitter at TechBall, T-E-C-H-B-A-L-T. -E and uh, follow and, and DisruptMeister.com. You can see all my videos. Or just, you know, go to YouTube, type in Bitcoin Meister, type in Adam Meister. And I, I'm CoinBeast on TikTok. I do the CoinBeast uh, vid uh, TikTok videos, which TikTok is a mindless place. But it, it can be yeah. fun, and I'm trying to reach out to the 80 percenters and, and, and bring them in. Yeah, that is great, man. So I will put all the links in the show notes. So please check Adam out. I, I'm sure like most of the people who listen to this podcast already know you, but still for some people who don't know you, they, they can check out in the show, show links. Thanks again, Adam. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks for having me on. It was really fun. It was really fun. Thanks, man.